We believe the direct approach amplification is the most natural way to present the speech signal to the developing auditory system. And this philosophy is consistent with the broad range of expert opinion and especially the AAA fitting guidelines. But for some children with this much hearing loss, the speech signal may not be faithfully or fully encoded by the peripheral auditory system, either due to damage or underdevelopment, or simply because it's not possible to fully guarantee uh, maximum audibility. For those children, we want to be able to carefully replicate some key information in the high frequencies and place it in a region in the mid frequencies that is simply working better for the child. We use a copy and keep approach where we replicate key information in the high frequencies and place it in the better functioning mid frequencies. We call this frequency composition. Based on the characteristics of the child's hearing loss, we'll pick some frequency region in the high frequencies where the child is most at risk for poor perception and replicate that information back in the mid frequencies where things are working better for the child. Other approaches in the marketplace will take a broad range of frequencies and squeeze it down into the mid frequencies, altering a broad part of the speech spectrum. Further, these approaches tend to abandon the high frequencies. We don't think it's the best approach to simply give up on the high frequencies. We believe that there's always the possibility that the child will be able to extract information from the high frequencies. By using frequency composition and by preserving the high frequencies, we present to the child both the high, original high frequency signal plus that information replicated in the mid frequencies. And for that particular child, that mid frequency replication may act as a supplement to the direct perception of the high frequencies, or maybe that will be the primary way that the child learns to understand the speech signal. Since you don't know for the individual child, you want to have both options available. The decision to use speech rescue is up to the audiologist in consultation with the parents. We believe, again, that the direct approach to amplification is the most natural way, and that should be the default approach. However, if based on the audiologist's professional opinion and the parent's preferences, it's decided that speech rescue needs to be part of the fitting for the child, then it can be easily activated in the Genie software. SpeechGuard E is our approach to providing gain and compression to the speech signal in a way that makes the signal audible, but also preserves the details of the speech signal. Speech Rescue will find important high frequency speech information and move it down into the mid frequencies. Speech Guard E will then take that package of information and place it within the remaining auditory dynamic range of the child in a way that fully preserves the details of the speech signal. The amplitude contrast in the speech signal is particularly important for children with this much hearing loss. Getting speech information to that child's cognitive system to allow the child to develop as fully as possible is a very difficult task. The audiologist is faced with trying to fight through a very disordered system in order to get good information to the child's brain. Speech rescue, especially in combination with speech guard E, we believe is in a very effective combination to try to take the most important parts of the speech signal and get it to the child's developing auditory system in a way that the child can get the most information from that signal.